Welcome to SBCA's Lumber Connection Podcast, where we discuss today's market and explore tomorrow's trends. Here's our host, Molly Butts. Hello, and welcome to Lumber Connection. It's the week of September 11th, 2023, and I'm in the studio with Justin Binning, Ken Timmons, and Jeff Hoggard. Justin, Ken, and Jeff are from American International Forest Products, or AIFP. Welcome to the podcast, gentlemen. Hello. Thanks, Molly. I think the last time I said it would be our last recording before the show, but as it turns out, we had time for one more. So here we are. And by the time we publish this, our online registration for BCMCFS will be closed, but there's still an opportunity for you to register on site. So I encourage you to join all of us next week at the Indiana Convention Center in Indianapolis, Indiana. Guys, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in person so soon. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's been, I don't know, too long, a few months since we all got together. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Well, let's get into the topic at hand and get it wrapped up so we can get on the road to Indy. What's been happening in the lumber market over the last couple of weeks? Well, I'll, I guess I'll kick it off with, I guess, a little West Coast summary some of the Doug fur that, that I spend most of my time doing. We've got two different types of markets. We've got the green market that is, I guess, sick, for lack of a better word to come up with here in a moment. Um, reeling back to the the levels that it's bounced off of a, a couple of times this year, really testing the mills to say, hey, how low are you willing to go before you're just going to shut it down? And we're just about back to that on, on a lot of that material. On the other hand, KD material is still holding somewhat steady, certainly not going up, but it is on a lot better footing than the green market right now. If we move inland a little bit, dry products in the mountain states, Activity's been good. People running inventories realizing that August was a good month. September is likely going to be a good month. And people are replenishing before we cool things off in the holiday season. I think everybody's expecting a pretty quiet Q4, but there's going to be a good push through that Q3 to Q4 transition period, um, which is cool to see. MSR products have remained high. I, I will be laughing with one of my mill reps at the BCMC. He quoted me yesterday at a price that I thought was outrageous. I flicked him a little saying, are you serious? That's really the price. And then next thing, there's a load being sold, right? There's just not a whole lot out there. And that's one product segment that's really just hung in at high levels. Yeah. Um, and it's too far between. You're lucky if you get some of those products quoted, depending on what you're look, looking for. Web stock is very cheap these days, contrary to what we're hearing in court stock. Hem for white fur in particularly inexpensive. Doug fur. There's a little bit of a price bed there, but overall very affordable compared to where it's been historically. And I don't see that trend changing for the next 30 days. The yellow pine world, I would say that the one one thing is not like the others, and that would be two by four, which continues to be the standout among anything in the U.S. South right now. We've had double digit gains over the last few weeks and limited availability, extended order files at the mill. And there's definitely been a strong push there. I think really the hope was that would bring everything else with it. It felt like it tried to, at least on the west side zone, and it's just fallen flat. So we're we're just in this spot where there's a, I feel like there's a lot of producers that are getting a slight premium to print and others that are not, which I guess at the end of the day, that's where it's it's a flat trade. In terms of the energy and feeling behind the market right now, I would say it's pretty pretty lackadaisical. And I think that the buying strategy remains the same as it's been, and we sound like a broken record, but most folks are in buying lumber when they need to buy lumber, and they're not when they don't. And price is secondary, and inventory management is the almighty right now. So if they don't need to buy it, they're not going to buy it. And when they need to buy it, they'll buy it for the best price they can and move on with their day. So we're not seeing a lot of speculation purchases. We're not seeing a lot of full segment of purchasing going on at the same time. It's one segment checks in one day or two checks check in and those guys check out and a few others check in the next day and rinse, wash, repeat. So really not a lot has changed in terms of value and pricing in Yellow Pine. I think everything can be deemed a value and there's a good story to be, tell, to be told on why it is a value. Anytime you're buying product at, at what I at these levels, you should feel pretty good about it. So to Ken's point, to tag on to the, the stress trade, that is another one that I'd say is a standout. Really anything eight inch and wider has definitely been a difficult find in the marketplace. You'll find some lengths, but if you're looking for a kind of a balanced tally or any longer lengths, those seem to be much tougher to come by. So 
not nothing real exciting or sexy to talk about today in terms of the lumber market, I would say, but we're still show up for work and we're still selling lumber every day. It's what you're working. You know, I mean, everybody's working their tail off and, and fighting for orders. So that's just, that's the trade right now. So, okay. I, and you guys have been saying this for the last couple of episodes that things are feeling fairly steady or just moving along at, at the same pace. But I would say that each one of you and even Jeff today sort of alluded to potential curtailments if prices get too low or any one thing were to shake up the market at this point. So I guess that's my question. Are you hearing anything? It's like we're all saying, well, this could happen, but are, how imminent would that be from your perspective? I think a full curtailment would be, I mean, it would we're not going to really be looking at that. The biggest okay. reasoning for that is that it's too hard to get employees to come back to work, right? right. So yep. those are desperately trying to hang on to the employees that they have. And right right now, we're just looking at the particular mills taking shifts off. They're no longer working a, a weekend shift, maybe not working that overnight shift. I mean, it's they're just dialing it back because using, again, Doug Fur as the example, the log costs are still flirting with the all-time highs. They've never come down. So when you get pricing that comes back down to these levels, in a lot of cases, especially in terms of the one and better or the stress grades, you get those at such low levels. Obviously, everything that goes underneath that down to the standard and better utility and economies, it's all loss leader and they, they just can't run at a loss leader for that long. So... I look at more when I bring up the term curtailments. I, I guess I, I mean, that's the worst case scenario. They, right. uh, we're not going to get to necessarily that point across the board. The other sort of trifecta of things that we bring up, but feel like they've really simmered down of late, are transportation. You guys have been pretty even keel about that. Nothing seems like it's super shaking everything up. But maybe you have something to say about that fires, which I know we're sort of out of peak season at this point. I'm not hearing a ton more, but maybe you guys have some information on that. And then weather. I mean, we went from some really hot, almost unbearable weather to finally getting some rain in some places and temperatures cooling off. I know here in the Midwest, it's downright fall feeling these days. So anything on any of those three fronts that we want to bring up or is, does it pretty well settle down for a bit? Oh, I see a finger. <laughs> <laughs> Truck, transportation out west, pretty easy, a little bit more expensive. Okay. There was a big rail event in the Northeast that uh, took a lot of fur products across the country to the Northeastern market. So that was significant. The extent of that, I'm not well versed on, but I do know that was something that shifted market demand quite a bit late last week. But overall, I'd say trans- transportation is pretty reasonable right now. Okay. Yeah, I'd agree. A mute point. I mean, nothing really to report there. Cool. Um, we will come up with some seasonal stuff, as uh, Kat alluded to. Right. Um, but I wanted to touch on a couple couple things you asked um, earlier. One yeah. about um, curtailment. I do think it's a, a real possibility in the U.S. South, at least from a shift perspective. I agree with Jeff in terms of employee retention and the, the necessity of that and the consequences of that. I think each market represents something a little bit different. But the U.S. South in particular... Again, it's like we can't get into numbers, so it's really hard to answer this question without answering the question, right? But right. we're we're in a, a relative range of that's a real possibility. Okay. Uh, for overall cost of production, we're right up on the line on seventy percent of the products right now. Okay. Right? Where it's like you're not that far off from mills are gonna start having those conversations. Right, like how long do we do this for? And if they can't hold the line, quote unquote, then some decisions have to be made. So there was another something else that we brought up the night now that I'm blanking. I wanted to touch on, but it'll maybe it'll come to me. But anyways, wanted to at least share that. I guess yeah. so. Absolutely. Anything on fire or weather from any of you? So I think there was this like the sentiment kind of leading into the fall. It's like, gosh, it's, it's a grinder. It's quiet. Well, the holidays and summer and people are on vacation. Once they get back settled in and, oh, and the kids get back in school and this thing's going to, we're going to go. Well, everybody's back from vacation. School started. Weather's nice. Cooled off. Yeah, sure. You get some rain here and there, whatever. But here we are. And I actually feel like there's less energy in the market now 
than <laughs> the time when we thought there wasn't much energy in the market. Okay. So it's it's still all based on need, like Justin said earlier. Guys are still only buying what they need, and we just haven't found that those catalysts, like the fires, like the the storms, have had any real added any real push to the market. I, I feel like there was a little bit more emotion drawn in there, right? Two three months ago, it was like oh mm-hmm. fire, and it just it did create a some level of emotional effect. The fear was there, but there was not that much follow through, right? Right. Yeah. There were some small fires, but nothing. But I think in our mar- marketplace right now, like that's that was a big deal, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like just based on where we're at, right? Mm-hmm. If we go back a decade mm-hmm. and a half ago, that emotional response felt w- way bigger mm-hmm. than it does today, right? Right? Because that emotional response back then it was a twenty dollar gain, which was like. Whew. <laughs> to the moon, Alice, right? But like after what we've been through and desensitized over the past three years. But anyways, so I think it's all perspective too a little bit and just setting our new normal, right? Price ranges when what emotional responses do, like we talked about the hurricane and that. It's like you would have never known it happened. I was just going to say, I saw, saw a shopping cart fire in downtown Portland last week. That was about the most eventful <laughs> fire I've seen in a while. <laughs> and, fire. and I only yeah. think there is one Japanese maple that went down. It wasn't yeah. a whole duck for a forest. So. <laughs> my orders, my favorite, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I have any late trucks on with anybody listening, that's why. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice, nice try. Nice try. All right. Well, it sounds like things feel mm, steady. Let's go with steady. That seems yeah. the most accurate. But what can we expect? I mean, you guys are heading into a week away. We're heading into a week away. A lot of our component manufacturers will be joining us. So sort of what's that strategy for the next couple of weeks leading into and then out of the back end of the BCMC and Framer Summit? Well, based on what what I see in my discussions with my customer, their their strategy is what their strategy has been, right? It's they're going to buy it when they need it. And then that's kind of it. So I don't know if there's much strategy that we can really put forth in place here out saying of like taking historical references and showing a graph to say, look, this is a good deal. The guys know it's a good deal. I mean, the, the, sure. most folks have been doing this long enough. They can register what a good deal looks like. So I would say if there's any strategy, take advantage of those deals if it makes sense for your inventory. But outside of that, I don't see anybody who's going to do anything that's outside of their lane. Why hold the material in the, in, in, and soak up the cash when somebody else can't? Right. And again, if it costs you twenty dollars a thousand more to buy it a little bit later, but because the way you manage your inventory makes sense for you, good. It doesn't seem to bother anybody anymore. So I don't know much strategy necessarily that's I can advise right now that's gonna shift anybody's way that they're gonna think about managing their business right now. I got two strategies. I suck at golf, really bad golfer, trying to get better. Anyone who's listening to this knows there's long game and short game, right? I'll give you a long game and a short game strategy. Short game, immediate. It's a great time to make firm offers. Like we're talking about, we are at very low levels. There is price confusion to some degree. The big obstacle for a lot of people bringing in new material as well, what if the market gets cheaper? Mm -hmm. Cool. Perfect. Totally reasonable. What if you could buy it at that cheaper level right now for shipping later, right? Take your hypothetical, create a best case scenario and give it a try. The worst thing that happens is you end up with your best case scenario or it doesn't happen any way just like you were before. There's your short game. Long game, I think you should try a new vendor out, right? The supply chain is not fixed. It's quiet. It might not be in 2024, 2025, but sometime between now and 2030, we're going to have something crazy happen again. Not a bad look, especially for people going to the BCMC and whatnot. Press an extra palm, introduce yourself, just put one more bow in your quiver. There's your long game. Any final advice before we wrap up for the episode? Just excited to see everybody. I think this is the the best show in the industry. That's not me plugging it or, or being that guy. It's like I truly, as I've gone to a lot, I've been doing this a decade and a half. I travel a lot. I've seen a lot of shows, and and this is the best one. So if you're coming, you get it. If you're not, come try it out. Check it out. It's awesome. Thanks. Well. I think that wraps up our episode for today. I encourage you to meet our friendly lumber guys at the BCMC FS. Justin, Ken, Jeff, thank you so much for your continued expertise and enthusiasm. As always, I've enjoyed our time together, albeit brief, and I look forward to the next installment of Lumber Connection. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Molly. See you See next Molly. week. Sounds good. This has been a Lumber Connection podcast by SBCA. If you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on a future podcast, 
send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com. 